All right. Um, great. So I'll be talking about Arrow and Rust. Um, so I'm Josiah. And uh, what I'm going to be covering today is kind of what I would call the status quo, the idea of Rust and FFI, Apache Arrow, and why I think we should be writing our um, algorithms with a Rust core, and going over quickly a, an example called Anime with a Crate that I've developed. So the status quo is kind of... Uh, I'm describing it as this idea of tight coupling. And in our ecosystem, we have uh, an example of data table. And in the Python ecosystem, we have the idea of um, NumPy here. So data table is for, was for the longest time a, the fastest data frame library in the world. Uh, but it was developed strictly with bindings that are built to work with R only. And then same idea here, NumPy is probably one of the best numerical computing libraries in the world. Uh, but it's developed to work strictly with Python. So one of the cons of this is that we get this like kind of, um, there's the developments here are siloed to the specific languages. And it also reduces the number of people who can contribute because you have to know not only C, but you also have to know R, C, API to develop a uh, data table, for example. Now, on the other end of this, we have this kind of approach of loose coupling where we have common core libraries and this is super common in the geospatial world, right? Where we have all of these core libraries that are written in uh, C. So we have like GDAL, Geos, and Proj. Um, and we have bindings to them in Python and in R. Um, but because there's like not really any sort of standardization of the inputs or outputs, we have tons of different um, APIs into these. And even though there are a ton of different R libraries and a ton of different Python libraries that all interact with the same core, they don't interact with each other super well. Um, so now I kind of want to talk about why I think we should be considering Rust as a way to write these core libraries. To me, Rust is easy-ish to pick up. I've tried and failed many, many times to learn C++. Rust actually worked. It's stuck. Um, a lot of times when we develop Rust, it compiles down into a single uh, executable or um, shared library. So it has no dependencies if you choose. And also from my perspective, it's really, really fast. And most cases where you write a simple thing in Rust, it outperforms what you would do in R Python. And as mentioned many times today, uh, we get easy parallelization by using Rayon. And additionally, we get this cr uh, cross-platform uh, libraries with very little that we have to think about or, or worry about when we develop with Rust. Now, Rust is also um, super great at FFI, so foreign function interfaces. So this uh, the Rust standard library has um, a module for kind of providing FFI utilities for C-like types. And R, Python, and Julia all have C APIs, which means that we can use Rust uh, to call the C APIs in those languages. So in the R ecosystem, we have something called extender. In Python, we have PyO3, as mentioned earlier. And in Julia, there's something called JLRS. And what one of the ideas here is that we can kind of develop a Rust core where we have this core library that's developed in Rust, and then we can use our favorite language, send data to um, Rust, but we have to probably convert it into this Rust format, right? It's not going to natively be able to go from R into the Rust side of things. So we use uh, the extender, PyO3, or JLRS step to kind of like do this munging to get it across the foreign function interface boundary. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about Apache Arrow um, and kind of what it is and why you should care. So uh, people often hear Apache Arrow and they think of like the R library or Pi Arrow, but more than anything, it's just a specification of what memory should look like. So for example, we have tabular data, and this is like the first five rows of the Penguins data set, for example, um, where we have these columns and we do a lot of these operations uh, on columns specifically. So we might be doing the min, max, sum, so on and so forth. Um, and in the traditional sense, we typically will see data stored in a row-oriented way uh, here. But Apache Arrow is a columnar memory format. So we store all of the columns in like a contiguous uh, section. So we have species together, island together, build length, build depth, so on and so forth. So you don't have to go through each row, grab one value, go through each row, and grab the other value for like name or species, for example. Um, and there are many different implementations for uh, Arrow. In R, there's two that I'm aware of. Python, there's three. So uh, Nano Arrow, Pi Arrow, and Arrow 3 by Kyle, who's somewhere in the chat. 
as well as uh, arrow.jl for Trulia. So um, we can kind of think about the status quo right now, similarly to how we have um, that loose coupling, where we can have these binding, we have a core library in Rust, but we can also kind of call that and create bindings to it using R, Python, and Julia. But that kind of leaves us in that same weird, messy place that we were at uh, previously with the loose coupling with like GDAL and the geospatial ecosystem, because there's no really defined uh, way to send data to and from. Whereas if we're using Apache Arrow, which is a standardized representation of memory, we can say, uh, we can send our data from R to Rust and Rust can access that same memory without having to do any of that costly uh, deserialization and serialization approach. The same is true for Python and Julia or anything that is using Arrow. Arrow in R is the same as Arrow in Rust as in Python or Julia. So this kind of brings us to a place where we can imagine where we're using Apache Arrow data all throughout our process. So step one, we might be calling out to a library using our Arrow data and sending it to Rust. Then that Rust process will send us back Apache Arrow, and then we'll go into step two, where we do another process, which might not be using the same library. It might be using uh, a library that's written in C++, but still also using Arrow. And all of this data is compatible with each other. So there's none of this cost of like representing uh, a vector in R as an array in um, Rust or so on and so forth. So an example of this is the anime crate or proximate network matching or network integration matching enrichment. It was developed with uh, Dr. Robin Lovelace from the University of Leeds. And the idea is that matching roads is really hard. Um, and this crate kind of recognizes that it will never be perfect. So we kind of do a partial matching of these line strings. And the idea here is that we've written this core algorithm in Rust and we have uh, implementation or bindings to that core library in R and in Python. But the idea is that we're using GeoArrow particularly to send data across uh, to the Rust core library. So both the R bindings and the Python bindings are using Rust, or sorry, using Arrow to send that data over. And this is kind of helpful going back to the last talk where we have a single uh, kind of mono repo structure where we have a Rust folder, which contains the core Rust implementation. Then we have an R folder, which contains the definitions to the R bindings, and then a Python folder, which has the Python bindings. So here we can look at what the R bindings look like. We have, uh, we load our packages, we read in our data set, and then we create this, uh, in we instantiate essentially the anime struct, uh, but from the R side. And then we have a similar thing, which is the same number of lines of code, um, but now we're using the geo arrow Rust package and so on and so forth. And we're defining this anime object using our PyO3 created bindings. And the great thing is that we get identical results because we're calling the same core. So in R and in Python, we get the same uh, results no matter what. And uh, to make this easier in the uh, Python ecosystem, there's something called PyO3 arrow, which has been exceptionally helpful for kind of sending arrow across from Python to um, uh, to, to Rust. And again, Kyle has done a lot of great stuff. He did object store, he's done this. Uh, so shout out to Kyle. And then on the other side, on the R side, we have the arrow extender crate, which helps us take things from nano arrow and arrow in R and make that accessible as arrow RS structs in Rust. So we can send them to and from with using both of these things. Now, just a quick peek under the hood, looking at the cargo.toml files for each of these. They're quite similar, um, where we have same arrow, geo arrow dependencies. Now we bind to our um, extender API for our bindings. Then for Python, it's again, similar idea. We have arrow, geo arrow, and now we're just using, oh, PyO3 uh, to connect at the end. Um, so the the too long didn't read of this talk is really that we should write, start considering writing our core algorithms in Rust and use Apache Arrow for this kind of foreign functions interface boundary so that there's none of this ser uh, costly serialization along the way. And that's all I've got for you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much um, for your presentation. Um, I have some questions coming in in the chat. Um, DM asks, is Arrow a specialized serialization format or does it do more, e.g. compared with JSON or protobuf? 
Uh, I'm not sure I totally understand. It's a representation of like memory or of data in memory. And yeah, it's not like protobuf where you have to define your structs in advance and send data across the wire. It is just strictly a way of representing the data in memory. But there's a way of uh, like arrow flight, I think is akin to protobuf if you wanted to use that as well. Stas asks, on the R side, if the package needs to be built for whatever dependency failure, what is a toolchain for that? Does it relate to R tools, which as far as I understand is a C compiler, or is there more stuff needed? So uh, I, I want to pull up the question so I can see them too. Um, i not sure I understand the question. R tools doesn't support um, Rust. So in order to build R packages that use Rust, uh, the Rust compiler has to be present and um, otherwise it, it won't work. So we kind of use the configure step to check that Rust is available and as is cargo. And then in the make vars step, we uh, build that shared library, which then gets linked at the end uh, end step. Hussam asks, the idea of a common memory format is fascinating. Are there any other such implementations we should be aware of? I don't know. Arrow is the uh, only one that I'm aware of for a standardized memory format.